You're listening to 91.3 FM, WCUW in Worcester, Massachusetts, Dr. Chris Radio Power Program. If you're not catching us live, hopefully you're catching this on our YouTube channel, which is where I found our current guest, this gentleman all the way from across the pond, calling us tonight, the objectivist, objective, ah, hold on. <laughs> objectivist guitarist. The objectivist guitarist. Martin, thank you for calling to the show with us and talking a little bit about your music, which was awesome, what I found on the internet. No problem, no problem. Thanks for having me. Where did you get the idea to start doing like all these uh, crazy covers of famous television shows and children's uh, programming and such in a metal format? <laughs> um, I, I mean, the covers were mainly a way just to draw attention to the channel. Originally, I, I wanted to just write original music um but obviously if you if you start a channel with with just originals nobody knows who you are um has any any way of finding you so covers were um initially just a way to draw people in but um i found myself enjoying the process more of of, of kind of re-envisioning other 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 tracks that i either um was a big fan of or was maybe a fan of the tv show like the power rangers one but um i always thought the theme music could be expanded upon um yeah, that was kind of it, really. Out of all of them, do you, would you say the Power Rangers is probably your most popular? It seems that oh, way. one point abs- two absolutely, million yeah. hits, and you also turned it into kind of a music video, right? Yeah, that was the first one I actually um, I did the track. I, I, originally, when I started the channel, I wasn't doing much in the way of videos, um, but I did that track, and I just I had a, a, a quiet confidence in it. I thought, you know what, this is this one's going to get. A bit more attention way more than i actually expected it ended up but um i thought i want to do a decent kind of video for it um and so i kind of went more into the editing on that one to try and give it more energy um and a kind of a more of a almost like an anime feel to it with the, the split screen of the guitars and the things that was kind of the inspiration um for the way that video turned out and for anyone not familiar with what we're talking about here's a little bit of his uh rendition of the power ranger theme song Now, let me ask you this question. How do you get over or around the copyright problem with music when doing a cover? Well, YouTube has, has kind of built-in functions for um, if, if you monetize a video, um, if, if uh, a copyright is detected, it essentially shares out any revenue you get from it with, with the, um, the owners of the track. Um, if I want to sell MP3s, then you have to license them. You have to. There's ways of doing that. You just essentially... Um, yeah, you again share the revenue so that uh, um, the original uh, creators and, and the owners of the tracks get get their share for whatever you're doing. Really, would that be Saban when it comes to the Power Rangers? <laughs> Do you know? I'm not actually sure. It's, it's automatic. <laughs> YouTube just um, sort of it, it puts a when you look at the yeah your creators view online, it just has a, a different symbol next to that track saying that you're sharing the uh, uh, the monetization from it. Um, I'm actually I've never looked into it precisely who owns it and where it goes or whether it's the I forget the name of the guy who wrote the track originally. I don't know whether it's him, but most likely whoever owns the TV show. Yeah. And you've also done Knight Rider, The Crow, Street Fighter Two, The Incredible Hulk's a Lonely Man cover, um, mm. Shinobi, the Terminator theme song, uh, and Zelda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the Zelda one. Actually, I, I'm a big fan of the franchise, but music-wise, there wasn't an awful lot that really stood out to me. That one is probably the least obvious. Actually, is when I started playing around with it on guitar. Um, I thought, you know what, this is something different that that probably not is not a direction anyone else has taken with it. Um, and so that's where I ended up doing that one. We are going to um, surprise you. We're going to use uh, a little bit of your cry little sister later on tonight when we record episode two of the Lost Boys Movie Minute podcast, where me and my co-host Scott take the uh, movie The Lost Boys and break it down five minutes at a time. <laughs> Fantastic. 
And then we'll wow. play the uh, song in its entirety at the very end of our podcast. So that way anyone who's interested in your music can uh, check out the uh, the whole song at the end of the podcast and then uh, check out your, your channel, your band camp information later on. Yeah, wonderful. Go for it. Fantastic. Good to hear. Um, I haven't listened to it yet, but I, I'm going to guarantee <laughs> that uh, it's probably better. Uh, I'm sorry. I listened to it the other day. And uh, what I meant to say was it, it does sound better. I guarantee to anyone listening, excuse me, that's what I wanted to say. Anyone listening yes. to this interview, I guarantee it sounds better than possibly Marilyn Manson's recent version of it. <laughs> I, I must admit, I, yeah, I wasn't keen on Marilyn Manson's version at all. I heard it on the radio. I was, I was just driving with some friends and um, I know he'd, he'd done it because I was thinking about doing it and, and I thought I, I should check that out. But before I do covers, I actually don't like to try and check out um, other people's covers of, of tracks because I want to kind of go in fresh um, without any kind of – I don't know, I, don't, I just don't want to contaminate what, what's going to be my ideas of what I'm going to do with it. Um, but I did hear his version and I wasn't keen. I mean compared to the original, I didn't like it very much. It was supposed to be part of the New Mutants soundtrack, um, but the new the New Mutants got pushed back a couple times, and who knows if it's going to get released now with the merger of Fox and Disney. Uh, okay. I'm not familiar with with that franchise, to be honest. New Mutants is a spinoff of the X Men. Oh, okay. Um, I, I had no idea. Um, yeah. But uh, it was going to be like a want... mutant uh, mutant X Men horror movie uh, based on the New Mutants comic book, uh, which again the New Mutants were younger mutants trained by charles xavier within the x-men uh comic books oh right, okay um yeah i mean I, I i i kind of dip in and out of the marvel kind of franchises I'll, I'll probably give it a look at least when it comes out if you saw the new movie deadpool the character cable actually takes over the new mutants later on uh towards the end of its run and then returns them he he is the one who turns the new mutants into x-force which was the team that deadpool had in the second deadpool movie uh, okay, I, I haven't actually seen the second Deadpool yet. I meant to take it out, but um, I, I simply didn't make it to the cinema, so I'll have to check that out when it um, comes out on, on. Well, it comes out for rent online. When the uh, new Terminator movie comes out next year, which yes, there is another Terminator movie yeah. coming out. You should start blasting your cover rendition of the Terminator theme song out there. Yeah, I mean, I found um, again. That's what happened with the Power Rangers one. That was kind of my idea at the, at the time I did that. They was obviously making the new movie. And I was always tempted to do the theme anyway, but I thought, oh, you know what? Now's the time to do it. Um, and every time there was a new trailer released or, or or the movie itself is when it really kicked off. I noticed the views really going up on on the theme tune. That's kind of um, it got people looking for that original theme tune. So there's every possibility with a new Terminator film coming out that people might start looking again on YouTube for the uh, uh, looking for covers and looking for the original music. Um, and it may well get a boost even on its own. What uh, covers do you want to do coming up? And uh, do you sing in any of these? Because I'll admit I haven't watched every single one of these, but uh, I don't think no. any of these have any vocals to them. So um, these no, are I'm all I'm just I'm orchestra. I'm actually pretty tone deaf, my, and my voice has a range of about half an octave before it breaks. So <laughs> no, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a useless singer, um, and and I definitely won't be doing any, any singing. But um, I mean, in terms of upcoming covers, I I've always got kind of lots of ideas on, on the go but I, I don't really like saying too much in case people either get excited or, or you know they get their hopes up um, because so many covers I kind of either start get bored of and then maybe pick up again months later when, when I get fresh ideas for it or, or just, just end up leaving to the wayside because I'm not happy with it but um, stuff I'm playing around with at the moment is things like uh, there's a video game called Shenmue I don't know if you've heard yeah. of that at all um, that's, they're, they're re-releasing a couple of old games and they're bringing out a new one um, and I was always a fan of those originals and the, the soundtracks were fantastic so if I can um, do something which I think does it justice and isn't just uh, a kind of lazy guitar cover essentially then um, maybe that um, and a, a bigger one a more well no one is the Jurassic Park theme I had a request on the channel um, a few weeks back and I've just been toying around with that seeing what direction I can go in with that and that's showing some promise at the moment what about castlevania i you know i've never played that many of, of castlevania i played the there was a, a game boy i think it was a game boy advance one but i'm actually not that familiar with the franchise although i have heard some of the music um i'm, I'm really ultra fussy though i get lots and lots of requests for covers um and i look into every single one when people request it but for me it needs to be a lot of the time something that i'm, I'm familiar with because i want to 
do something more than a straight cover um so with with go, i'll go back to the power rangers one things like putting the dragon zord theme in there it's something that anyone who's watched the show as, as a kid um would really get a kick out of at that moment it's something a little bit extra than doing just a straight cover and i think you really need to know the franchises in order to be able to kind of do that um but i don't rule anything out on that basis i just um i just find i'm more into the covers when i'm doing it that way the um theme song to castlevania it has a really Sorry, good uh, the theme song to Castlevania has a really good riff to it. Yeah, um, I'm pro- I've probably heard it. I just don't know off the top of my head because I've never really played them that much. I mean, when you say Castlevania, as in, is there like a running theme song through all the games, or is it like a specific one? There's a there's a specific song called Vampire Killer that's been used several times in the game that goes something like. Okay. <laughs> something like that <laughs> it's not ringing any bells but um oh look I it definitely... up dude it's such a great song you should totally cover it i i really i it's it's gothic rock and roll at its best i'm gonna make a note of it um what, what was it called vampire castlevania vampire killer uh music uh castlevania main theme usually it, it's referred to as but i think the name of the song is actually called vampire killer because it's named after the whip the whip in the game okay. that you use most of the time most of the games have a character that uses uh the belmont whip to you know yeah. whip your way through the games that the the whip is called vampire killer as well Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely check it out. I promise you that, and and I'll even have a go. But um, yeah, I just I just don't like to make any kind of promises because I think people don't realize for every kind of um, ideas I have myself, for every ten I start, maybe one of them makes it into an actual finished um, kind of product. Because again, I I just I really need to be. I want everything I do to obviously excite me. I want I want at the end to really kind of um, have the confidence behind the end product, and uh, so. Yeah, it, it, it may come out. It may it may not. If it may come out in like five years' time, when I finally get around to to doing something that I think's uh, worthwhile with it. But um, but I've made a note, and I will definitely check it out. I, you did the Incredible Hulk. Do you plan on doing more video games like uh, maybe uh, Batman or Superman's theme? Or the Avengers have a pretty iconic thing now that they've had three films out. Yeah, I just I only just watched um, Infinity War the other day actually, what and. Did you think? Um, Sorry, I think I should say that again. What did you think of Infinity War? Um, I mean that that's going to be a, a probably the shake up the entire interview itself. I actually I enjoyed. Um, I'm really fussy when it comes to CG, and and the main character Thanos. I actually enjoyed the CG character for the first time in a long time in, in any film I've seen. Um, a lot of people thought fu- he was rendered better than the Hulk. Um, in the other two, you know, the last three times the Hulk has been on screen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and just just the, I think it's Josh Brolin who plays him. The actual yep. emotions, the thoughts came through. Um, so it's not even even just like a technical thing. It's I believe there was a character there who was who was thinking and, and acting, um, which yeah, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of. Um, there's a hugely unpopular opinion. I'm actually a, quite a fan of the original uh, Ang Lee uh, Hulk film um, for the same reasons. I enjoyed the Hulk's acting as a cg character more than uh, than, than uh, the later ones that followed how old were you when you first picked up your guitar and what was the song that really made you want to become a you know a, a guitarist do you have your own original mm. work as well uh yeah there's a couple of original tracks of mine on the channel um i mean i think i wasn't that young actually i was about i think i was in kind of college about 17 maybe when i first kind of decided to give guitar a a proper go i was kind of a fan of uh kind of rock based music and things but um the first kind of my memories of really loving the sound of a guitar were probably mainly 80s things like maybe the top gun theme um by steve stevenson or steve stevens actually is that um dun, 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 oh no that's uh, no 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 you're thinking of the uh, the actual the, songs from the film it's it's the oh, actual uh, the, it's called top band anthem oh, okay that's the song by kenny loggins i'm thinking of right 
Uh, Danger Zone, you're thinking yes, of. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I did love the whole soundtrack, but uh, no, it's the main theme. It's, it's just an instrumental. It's lead guitar all the way through. Um, and it's, it's tone wise. I just sort of, yeah, that, that sold me on, on guitar. And, and, and watching films like The Crow, the guitar solos in that film, which obviously I ended up covering, that was one yes. of my earliest inspirations. Really good song. But uh, I always thought, uh, and no offense to your cover, I like the orchestra to The Crow. I have it on, I, I bought it on vinyl. That's how much I like the orchestra track for The Crow. But but yeah. I will have to say, again, no offense to the orchestra, but the s- soundtrack itself with all those songs on there from the 90s kicks yeah. so much ass. You know what I mean? <laughs> you have like Nine Inch Nails and you have um, uh, uh, the oh – now I, I, I forget the artists that are on there, yeah, but yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with it. Mind, but uh, – God, what a great soundtrack. You know, it's a good movie, too. <laughs> Thankfully, we got a good movie. We got a great soundtrack. We have a good score. We have a legendary death c- accompanying the movie. <laughs> um, yeah. And it's like the only other, like, truly, I want to call it truly gothic soundtrack that compares to the Crow soundtrack is, uh, and I, this might be blasphemous and some people can yell and scream and shout. I don't care. I'm not going to listen to your comments. But if you want to <laughs> argue it, that's fine politely. That's totally okay. Queen of the Damned, I thought, has as good of a gothic soundtrack as The Crow. Not score, but soundtrack. Even though the I'm movie not, is completely I crap. don't know. I'm not familiar with it. Queen of the Damned is based on the Anne Rice novel. Okay. No, it starred, I've not watched it. Um, it starred um, uh, uh, Stuart Townsend and Aaliyah in the final role before she died in a plane accident. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah, she had yeah. only done like one other movie, which was Romeo Must Die, starring Jet Li, and then she did, right. and then she was cast as uh, Akiasha, the Queen of the Vampires, but she died in a plane crash uh, with only a few scenes left of film, and they had her twin brother stand in for her um, in some scenes towards the end of the movie. Right, okay. No, I'll, I'll, again, that's another thing I have to check out. Um, I can be surprised and eager from lots of. Uh, pop culture and, and things like that can sometimes be a little bit of a hermit and uh, not pay attention to too much of what's going on um i'm also going to suggest maybe buffy the vampire slayer but that also has its i mean buffy the vampire slayer's music is already very guitar exactly. heavy metal you know what i mean mm-hmm. it's it's definitely not i wouldn't say it's heavy metal but it's definitely not pop or rock it's definitely yeah. metal, and it's and it's uh you know you know yeah. it's, it definitely it's got that metal vibe to it. Now Angel's theme, which was the spinoff of Buffy, had a more you know violin kind of playing you know something like Lindsey Sterling. I would I would probably I would love to hear her maybe play it. Lindsey Sterling is an American uh, violinist here who has okay. made a very popular career on YouTube. Uh, like rocking out with the violin, you know what I mean? And right, like right, yeah, yeah. Music. And she does covers too. She's done Legend of Zelda, Game of Thrones, Pokemon. You should do Pokemon. Pokemon would. Be- <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you've have- gotten requests for Pokemon like crazy. <laughs> I have had a few requests for Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> well, where can people go to check out the rest of your music besides the uh, your YouTube channel, which I I hope more and more people subscribe to. Uh, but at the moment, I, everything that um, I'm putting out is, is just on YouTube. Um, I mean, after I started playing guitar, like most people, I kind of went into a band. And I, I had a band for the best part of about a decade or so um, before that kind of fell apart. And after that, I just got kind of fed up sort of the, the whole band um the way it works and working with other people so then i started the youtube channel um so anything i've actually got worth showing at the moment is, is already on the youtube channel check it out as i say there's a few originals already on there plus all the covers um i'm nearly done i mean i've, I've finished another original track recording wise but um again i'm just struggling with the mixing stage at the moment but as soon as that's done i'll make a video and that'll come out next um haven't actually got a track name for it yet i haven't decided on one um so yeah just just youtube is the best place to go um i mean if anyone's interested in little kind of um video snippets of things i'm working on stuff like that i've recently created a uh, a facebook page and an instagram again both um objectivist guitarists are just you can check those out for small updates and things but for the main releases um all on youtube awesome dude well we're gonna leave uh this interview with the uh cover that you did for the crow i wish you the best of luck and uh, again if you were unfortunately able not able to catch this interview uh it will be up on youtube soon uh once again thank you martin no problem. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Uh, hey, real quick, um, we'll play this tonight. Uh, it's on my Facebook page, so if you want to share it around, 
and uh, then I will send you a link to once of the interviews on my YouTube channel. Yeah, fantastic. I'll have a look. Cool. Bye, dude. Thanks, man. Thanks. See you later.